It's the Lubavitch have emphasized that there's four wars of Amalek against the Jewish people. Thank you for joining Hope for Humanity. This is merely a short excerpt from the full teaching, so you can find below the link to watch the entire video. Everything we do at Hope for Humanity is done with you in mind, so please leave your comments and thoughts below and be sure to help us spread the message of hope. Thank you and God Almighty bless you. One is coming out of Egypt, going to Mount Sinai. The Malik attacked openly. On the way, when the Jewish people came closer to going into the land, the Malik came disguised as Canaanites, speaking their language to confuse the Jewish people. The third major war was in the times of King Saul. They came openly. And the Rebbe says in the times of the coming of Mashiach, they're going to come again with their blast battle and they're going to disguise themselves in every disguise possible. They're, they're using the wrapping themselves in the turbans of Islam to get you confused. But we have to realize what the Torah teaches us. Actually, the Malbim on this, Zechari 8.23, I was quoting to Zechariah 8.23, I was quoting to you before. He says, actually, the Ishmaelites, the descendants of Ishmael, are going to be the first to recognize God. They're the most ready to accept the God Almighty, God of the, the, the God, God Almighty, the God of Israel, is the one true God. That's what he writes. Go look inside. Zechariah 8:23. We are being forced through mirrors and deception to believe that there's hundreds of millions of Arabs against us. They just wish that we would stand up strong for once and liberate them all from this. If we would only stand up strong, they would be freed from their own terror regimes. We let them down every time. And this is the same lie, my friends, of the Holocaust. The main lie of the Holocaust was not to convince the non-Jews that the Jews were dangerous. That was an instrument. The main lie to carry out the Holocaust was to convince the Jews that the non-Jews didn't like the Jews. And therefore, there was no safety in the world. And the only safe place was under Nazi rule. Because the Nazis came into every place proclaiming that they were to help the Jews and they better not flee because the fields were dangerous and the hills were dangerous. And they managed to corral the Jews into thinking they were going to be taken care of because the world was a dangerous place. It's the exact same propaganda we suffer from today. So you have to realize that all these polls that come out saying that 99% of, of uh, Arabs in the Midwest Bank would get put on a suicide belt, whatever, made, that's all manufactured by the uh, Marxist intelligence services, by the Israeli intelligence services. They lied to the Israeli people in, the, in convincing the people to give up Gaza was about population growth. They, over, they fabricated the numbers of people in the Gaza. They fabricated the numbers to try to convince people that it made sense. So what do we have to do now, my friends? We came here for action, came here not to lament about the situation, the Torah is a, is a book, a guidebook for action. So I'm going to discuss some things that some of you are not going to like to hear. And that is okay. And hopefully you'll come around to it. But the message has to get out there. The same truth that has to be told about the reality of the situation has to be told now. But what needs to be done? Now, first I want to address... If you go to any J Jewish site, everyone's talking about taking on more Torah and mitzvahs. We know that the Torah is the foundation of the world. The world we just learned was created for the sake of the Torah. And for the sake of the mitzvahs, the Jewish people are going to do with civilization is dependent on the commandments that the non-Jewish people perform. This is the fundamental part of existence. So yes, it is important to increase in your Torah learning and in your Torah observance. Yes, for every Jew and every non-Jew. That's not a question about that. But a lot of people calling for that stop right there. They want, and it's correct, the Rebbe called for everyone to put on tefillin, all the Jewish men should put on tefillin. The women should light Shabbos candles. <coughs> people should put up kosher mezuzahs. Should pray. Should daven, you should daven and pray. You should give charity. Should increase your faith. Should have a letter in the Sefer Torah, in a Torah written, and it should increase in joy. 
And these are all absolutely true. And if we had time, we could go through each one of them, discuss the details. But my friends, the Torah is telling us to do these things so that we have the strength to take action. The Torah is not practicing ideas that create, it's true, it creates spiritual results. And if all the Jewish people are full of joy and we're full of certainty that God's protecting us and we have a mezuzah on our door and we know that the Lord God Almighty who does not slumber or sleep is protecting us. That's that's very important. But it's why is that so important, my friends? Is so that then we could follow what it says in the halacha and shin chavtes and go take arms up on Shabbos and without any fear, preemptively strike those that come against us. Whether it's coming against the Jewish people or good human beings anywhere. The reason that we do, why do we have to, to gather together to learn Torah and say Psalms is so that we get it. Why do we have to say Psalms, my friends? It's not just because when we say Psalms, we're asking God Almighty to have mercy on the people that are injured and hostages and, and elevate the souls that are those that are murdered. It's so that we should have the clearness of head and mind to break through all the lies and to see what the truth is and have the clarity of mind and heart to take action, to hear God Almighty's voice for us. That is not, we're not meant to be sitting there thinking that the only thing that we could do is pray and hope someone else is going to solve the problem. That's not what prayer is about. Prayer is about, I am ready to take action, God. Show me. Show me what I need to do now. Even if you have no military training, even if you don't even know which end of a rifle to hold, even if you don't know the difference between your right and left hand, you ask God to guide you. And when we look up to God Almighty, we can be victorious at every single battle, our internal battles and our battles as humanity against the forces of Amalek and on, on behalf of God Almighty to carry out his mission in the world. So all these things are meant to bring strength. So I want to give you an example. The Rebbe said that everyone should put on tefillin. Now, everyone talks about that campaign, but they don't quote what it actually says. It says that the nations will see that God Almighty is upon you and they will be afraid. When they see that a Jew has so committed to God Almighty, he's putting on the parchments that have, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is, the Lord is one on his forehead, above his forehead, and on his arm. They're going to see this is a person that's committed to God Almighty. How could they even dare go make war against them? As a matter of fact, it says that they're going to, it, it says the word is you, they're going to see, they're going to fear, but it really means to see. They're going to see God Almighty's vision, and they themselves are going to choose to participate in God Almighty's vision. The Lubavitcher Rebbe and the Torah says in general, the Lubavitcher Rebbe says that our greatest enemies right now are going to become our greatest advocates. Because they're going to see that in the midst of this whole conversation that we're learning here together, we see that in that Arab person right now who's making a choice whether to push the button on another missile or not. And in the soul of that Israeli commander who's making a decision whether to allow his forces to remain defenseless and take no action or half-hearted action or to violate the orders of, from above and actually go ahead and decisively crush those that come to kill the Jews and Arabs of Israel. We are focusing on the fact that each one of those people is created in God Almighty's divine image. When that man hears this message, that will awaken in him the recognition that he's created in God Almighty's divine image, and he will choose to make the right choice. The man who right now is committed to the terror regime will pull his fingers off the trigger. And the commander who's committed so far to defeat in every turn will say enough is enough. He wants to do tshuva, and he's commanding his soldiers to move ahead without any restrictions on <laughs> limitations on what how to fight a war other than the Torah's rules of war. So when we see other people the way they really are, and when we speak about them the way they really are, this is why I said at the beginning, we have to understand the big picture, the Ruach Hashem and the Ratzon Hashem, because if you are stuck in the idea that Arab terrorists are animals, 
then you don't understand what it means to be a human being. Because the fact of the matter is, if you did not have the Torah guiding you, or some residual of the Torah from your upbringing in a culture, a non-Jewish culture that has some vestiges of Torah teachings against murder, that every human being would end up like these terrorists. Because you have lost sight of what a human being is, and you think that you're superior because of your actions that are evidently superior because you don't kill people, therefore the other person's an animal, you don't understand that we're all one step away from acting like that. And it's only by the divine help that God Almighty provides each one of us to make the right choice that we are promoting life and we are promoting an increase in life and we're promoting that every human being increases life. So we have nothing to sneer at, at people, especially when it's the Israeli government that abandoned all these kids that are now terrorists to a, an education system that has inculcated them in this terror mentality and action. They are all one step away from making the right choice if they would understand that there is hope. They've only done this out of despair because they have been raised in an environment of despair that the communists promote, that there is no hope, and therefore the only way to act is through destructive revolution. When we reach them with the Sheva Mitzvah B'nai Noach and teach them that the Torah has to say, then they'll realize they do have a choice. Again, we're not exonerating them from culpability for what they've done. But we're explaining what the Torah viewpoint is on what every human being really is. So you've got to scratch from your mentality and delete messages from anybody who's, and don't listen to anybody who says, these are animals, these are subhumans, these are human beings that have been raised under the same schooling system, my friends, that the Marxists want to implement for your children. If you don't fight to keep the Marxists out of your schools, out of your yeshivas, out of your public schools, out of your chedarim, this is what every human being will, could end up looking like, God forbid, if they are subjugated to that psychological manipulation of the Marxists. So all of a sudden, when you look at things from a Torah perspective, you have a lot of humility. This is not an animal. This is a human being that was subjected to the horrifying, torturous treatment of a Marxist system. Better take action fast, my friends. Because people like those Marxists live among us. Some of them are Jewish. Some of them are not Jewish. So we have to move urgently. Like the Rebbe said, it's necessary to teach the Shev Mitzvah Ben Enoch to prevent the Holocaust. Everyone's liable to descend to the level of the Nazis, given the right social circumstances, the right prodding, and the right identification of who the enemy is. No one's exempt from that. So we have to have some humility. And the humility is to know that we're created in God Almighty's divine image, and so is every single human being, bar none. Every single human being is created in God Almighty's divine image. That is a fact. 